It's really great actually that you can find the best people that you need, create your dream team or identify your dream team. Because there's a pattern of behavior among the leadership and management team. You stop having no clue, you actually get a really great idea of where your people are. We can start to dive into what are the manager or the evaluator biases. Welcome everyone, my name is Kim Larson. I am part of the client experience and success team here at Luminoso. Hello, my name is Raymond, Raymond Nienhaber. I'm working for Edigo. I'm in, at Edigo, I'm HR consulting director and HR thought leader. We're going to go over why it's so important to tap into stories to improve company cultures as we go forward. It, it's real drama actually for Andy because there is only one opportunity for first good impression, you know, and uh, that comes in with the CV. And, and that's Andy's uh, fate, so to say, and it's taken, you know. So who do we probably pick? We, we, hired, we hired Mickey and the, the other line manager, he will have to let her go. Uh, internally, I know there is sometimes some internal hassle, but it's really great, actually, that when you're using it legal, that you can find the best people that you need. And not only for this kind of succession planning, even when you're like creating internal projects and you really want to find the best people for this one. Many projects actually fail due to mismatch of competencies, you know, due to the uh, not not right bounded competence in the team, you know, you need to have as well team dynamics, so many things are to be considered when you're building a team, uh, especially a project team. In the new approach, you just ask the system who has this, who knows this, who knows that, and you can actually create your dream team or identify your dream team, you know, together with HR, that will provide super cool results to the organization for the business benefit. Now, I want to know why, why did Paul leave in the first place? How do I improve things for Nikki and Alan so that perhaps Nikki will stay and not get recruited to Paul's new organization? And I also want to make sure that we are developing Alan because that level of career stagnation, to me as a, as a leader or as a corporate manager, that's a little concerning to me because I want, I, I want Alan to improve. I want him to be happy. I want the best for Alan, right? One of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to check how are my employee surveys comparing to what's being posted about my company on places like Glassdoor, Indeed, Fishbowl, Blind, wherever my, my employees are talking outside of company forums. I want to be able to know how, how much trust do my employees have in our employee survey process. I want them to be able to feel comfortable talking to HR and tell us like tell us about their career goals, tell us about the benefits they like and don't like. I want to keep tabs on their frustrations so I can ease that and be able to keep the employees that I want our team to have. So with Luminoso Daylight, Daylight is a text analytics platform that analyzes natural storyful text like what we would see on Glassdoor. Glassdoor will ask reviewers, what are the pros of working at the company? What are the cons and what are the advice to management? There's also some segments that we can drill into how long they've, working, how long they've been working there, uh, what kind of role or position they have, and among some other demographics. So for the Raymond and Kim Corp, our pros include good compensation, lots of opportunities. We're an ethical company, hence the competency that we wanted to see with Paul and, and Alan and Nikki and Andy, if he had only updated his CV. We also offer flexible working hours. Uh, Raymond is in Malaysia, I'm in Portland, Oregon, uh, and our, our team is expanded across the globe. So we know what our strengths are. So Raymond and I are gonna to work together to uh, protect these values so that Nikki and Alan remain happy at uh, Kim and Raymond Corp. But we also wanna check our bureaucracy. We implement a lot of technologies. We do a lot of competency evaluations, uh, but the perception among our employees is that we are slow and highly bureaucratic. Every quarter, they're going through these competency tests. And they, they can't quite figure out why is it, why is there so much overhead, which is fine. Raymond and I will figure out how to explain that to our employees so that they talk back to us so that they understand the value of each of the steps that we're doing. And we're going to offer these employee surveys to make sure that they have a place to communicate that to us and they aren't having to take these things to Glassdoor, Blind, etc. We also see that there's high pressure, long hours. Uh, but we also see a nice no cons 
section. We love to see no cons for working at our company. Another thing that we're going to notice is we are a tech company. We're distributed across the globe. Uh, and perhaps our compensation doesn't reflect those that have central offices in expensive areas like the Bay Area, which is, makes sense. I think Raymond's cost of living in Malaysia is a little bit cheaper than living in Cupertino. Uh, so there's there's some pros a and cons bit. to a little bit. <laughs> so there's a, a uh, there's a compensation concern. So we'll we want to be cognizant of that and make sure that our uh, our our value. Uh, offsets that kind of that discussion. So Paul had been with our company for a long time. So I'm going to filter that down to the employees that have been with the company for more than 10 years and what they're saying about glass, about the cons and glass door. And the conversation shifts slightly from the general discussion where they talk about the slow, bureaucratic, outdated. The folks who've been here for 10 plus years, if they think perhaps maybe we're changing too fast, maybe, uh, the, the politics, the reorgs, their, the layoffs, they've been there longer. So they've seen more cycles and it feels more frequent than folks who've only been there for a year or were hired in the most recent reorg. And they're, and they're getting onboarded through this um, more uh, structured system. So we're going to be able to dive into the demographics because depending on what Raymond and I need in terms of experience and agility, we may need to keep more of our tenured employees or recognize that it is a frustration and a natural uh, churn will happen among that demographic. Raymond and I will have to discuss that at our next business meeting. Another part of Glassdoor is the advice to management. So this is for employees that have been with the company for over 10 years, like Paul. And the way we're going to uh, understand this chart in front of us is if they mention stability, there were 10 mentions of it. But if they mentioned it, on average, their score was much higher than the average as far as how do they perceive career opportunities. If stability is something that is associated with, yes, they believe they have career opportunities there, which is great. That's what we wanted when we brought on Adligo to help understand our employees. But one thing that I'm noticing uh, in light of Paul's narrative uh, we have quit and lost the, the talent promoted. I think there's still some room for us to demonstrate the value of a Lego by hiring and promoting within. Perhaps it's not a bad thing that Andy didn't turn in his perfect CV because now Nikki feels better because she got promoted. She was identified early. Hopefully we can keep her and help uh, the morale of the folks who've been here for over 10 years. Specifically in that promoted category, people who mentioned promoted on average felt that the uh, career opportunities was a 2.8 out of five. And that is not where we want it to be. We want it to be, you know, all of the promotions should be a reason that people mention like a high career opportunity score. So we're going to look into what were people saying about promotions Generally, promotions, if we had a dictionary, Raymond and I would guess promotions are a positive thing. If you mention promotions, you should be happy, right? In this case, it was highly polarizing. When people talked about promotions, 40% of the mentions of promotions were in a negative light. 30% were in a positive with the remaining gap as a neutral statement of fact. In this case, someone said, be much more careful about who you promote to middle management. Do not promote people with poor people skills. So someone may have had a ton of high competencies, but if we're not evaluating how well they work with others and how well they manage, that's going to impact the whole team around them. That's going to matter going up and it's going to matter going down. Similarly, someone who phrased it in a more positive light as an encouragement instead of a warning, promote higher EQ leaders who can drive hard, but also motivate, not the soulless money savers. This person's looking for someone who will read through the CVs, read through the LinkedIn profiles, and not necessarily look at the chart and stop, which makes sense. If, if someone on our team, perhaps Raymond or I, had looked at Andy's LinkedIn profile and the recommendations there that didn't make it into his CV, maybe we could have caught him and he would have been a great fit for the team and then Nikki could have stayed at her role and kept her head down. Pros and cons. Pros and cons to every approach, but... Uh, 
the feedback from the people who've been here over 10 years is they're they're communicating this because there's a pattern of behavior among the leadership and management team. How did Nikki not get promoted earlier? Well, they didn't have it legal. They didn't have Luminoso, you know, and they had no clue. And the most important thing is that whenever you whenever you start using it legal, you stop having no clue. Actually, you get a really great idea of where your people are and you can really plan and target and monitor where the people are going to be tomorrow. Well, how did Nikki get not get promoted earlier? And one of the things that I would want to check would be the performance review history, right? Like she has this competency. We can see she has it. Why? How was she overlooked? So one of the things that I want to look at is uh, Paul's previous manager, who is also managing Alan and Nikki, and see what kind of language he was using in his performance reviews of Paul, Nikki, and Alan, specifically Nikki, Nikki and Alan. So when he was describing how Nikki contributes to the team, he used the word friendly because like we see Nikki, she's warm, she's leaning forward. She's, yes, friendly is fair. Uh, but when he was describing Alan, he was not described as friendly. He was described as professional. And as he sits there, like, yes, we can see that. Uh, but when they were looking for, you know, skimming the performance reviews, they're like, okay, we want to promote the professional one. And the term friendly wasn't coming up in that in that language. So one of the things we want to look at is, well, why, like they're both good traits, but one was more valued than the other. Um, so perhaps that that is something that we can look to Nikki's manager for to find out well, what the language that you were using. Can we can we look into that a little bit? Another difference was Nikki was described as busy. She shows up at eight. She leaves at six. She is she is being productive the whole time. She is busy with no gaps in her calendar. Whereas Alan would put up a do not disturb sign and it was identified as hardworking. So when we were looking at the performance reviews between Nikki and Alan, the words that were chosen to describe their performance varied. And it seems like perhaps Alan's was um, offsetting the, the language used with Nikki and the performance reviews were simply not enough without the competency tests. And with by putting the performance review, the written performance reviews into daylight, looking at what was unique to um, either the genders or the performance evaluation or how long that someone's been here, we can start to dive into what are the manager or the evaluator biases that are not being caught um, without Edligo showing the, the true competency skills. I, I, Kim, you were just asking me how frequently do actually companies run competency assessments. You know? And, and I, I just said, you know, we do have some companies that, uh, who are limiting the cycle to three months. So it means every quarter. Every quarter they're running these goals. They want to run this hyper agile. And this is especially done in a large, very large consulting company. You know, they really run this every three months because they want to keep their people learning, 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 learning. And, and even they have said, if you haven't learned, you won't get a promotion. You know, if you haven't learned, that's what they even say, you know, so you have to do this. Otherwise, your promotion are completely gone. You know, you, you, you have have no chance to move on anywhere, you know? So that's for them a prerequisite. That's why, of course, there's a huge adoption rate, you know? And even training in that company has increased by 200%, really has skyrocketed, you know? And the view is that people are now taking the right training because it's not only that for the employee that they're doing the competency assessment, you connect it as well to the LMSs that, they, that they're using. Uh, there could be like an internal or SharePoint or whatever, people have, or they use a Udemy, they use a LinkedIn, and then we, we usually have APIs, or sometimes we have direct links of training, and then the people are able to benefit from that directly, you know, so, and are exposed to all this learning, they have the learning path, the learning plan in their, in the dashboard, and can then actually quickly, easily see, or, or people can, as well can offer, hey, I know something, and they can share this, and then someone can book the other person maybe for coaching, or, you know, I can offer a coaching, and, and this way, all that way, you know. And um, the other important thing is, like, what we're seeing here through Glassdoor and all these external portals, we see this as well, uh, partially, we can as well make lots of stuff visible there using the Adleek uh, by, by asking people those questions, you know, how happy are you about promotions? How happy are you with your manager taking care of your development? Are you think your 
company is taking care of your development. And with that, we actually have a well, a pretty precise view on attrition risk, on flight risks in organizations, because you just put these together, you ask AI, what do you think? And then we have as well a very quite good confidence calculated about how many percent of the people are actually going to leave the company. You know, and that one you can then you use to forecast actually how many people, if you continue the way of you're doing, how many people you need to continue actually to recruit in each competences and where it's going to be hurt, where it's going to hurt you. You know, just imagine you're, you're, you know, when there's a board meeting, hey, we want to have a new product, we want to come out with this one. And, and then the question comes, HR, can you tell us how many people actually do have this competence or how much, how long will it take us to? To, to get us there, you know, and you could just, okay, let me have a quick check, you know, and, and you respond and, and then you can tell them, oh, well, you can launch this product in maybe six months because we already have 50 people doing this or having this competence, you know, and then we can do a big bang and, and can, can, can roll this out. So right now, many people have, and many companies, they just don't know this. They have a hunch. Thank you, uh, Raymond, for joining us and for highlighting the value of Adligo. Um, I'm Kim from Luminoso. P feel free to reach out if you have any questions. If you want to share your uh, story full data with us, if you would like to see how your data or the applicability of either of our platforms help you with, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. We're happy to help. Um, and maybe we'll hire again at Raymond and Kim Corp. Who knows? Yes, I hope so, Kim. Yeah, it was great fun. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Good. you for Thanks, having Raymond. me. All right. Bye, everyone. It says, hey, there is an opening. You could actually apply for that. She is now actually, she is the number one. Well, they learn, they study. They are actually ready for the role, but they don't reach out to we want to hire him. It, it's real drama, actually, for Andy, because it's really great, actually, that when you're using a ego that you can find the best people that you need. 